Hi, welcome again. It's a joy to be with you. We're going to value the Word of God today, and these words are life to you. Remember, they are life, health, and medicine to those who find them, according to Proverbs 4. Life, health, and medicine, right? So we're going to value and esteem the Word of God highly today. Let me ask you a question. How important is the Word of God to you? How important is your health to you? Right? So if you want health and healing working in your body, then you will want to put the Word of God number one in your life. What's that mean? Well, you're going to give time and attention to it. You're going to listen to the Word of God. You're going to hear it. You're going to look at it. And it will become life and health to you as you do that. You want to value the Word of God above all else. Put a high value on it. Esteem it highly. Put the Word of God number one in your life. You know, sometimes people are casual with the Word of God, but if people are casual with the Word, then it's like they're just going to reap. Well, the Word will be casual with you, right? But if you esteem it and put a high value on it, then it's like every word that the Word of God is coming to you, you know, um, teaching and preaching and, and just reading the Word of God as you're hearing it, and you're like, man, I, I believe it. You can choose to receive it. You can choose to believe it. And you can and choose to enjoy the benefits of it. Right? Who pardons all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. Right? Forget none of his benefits. So there's salvation, there's healing by hearing the word of God. So we value the word of God. If I could say anything today that'd be very, very important, it'd be that. Put the word of God number one in your life because it will bring health to you. Can you believe it? Here we go. Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3 verse 13 to 18. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 13 to 18. If you want to look at it. It says, How blessed is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For its profit is better than the profit of silver and its gain than fine gold. She is more precious than jewels, and nothing you desire compares with her. Now, verse 16, Proverbs 3, verse 16 says, Long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. So it's talking about the Word of God, and the Word of God is talking about the wisdom of God, which comes from the Word, right? So yes, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God, but also we get wisdom by reading the Word, by attending to it, by letting it saturate our spirit and our mind. We want the wisdom of God because the Spirit of God is the Spirit of wisdom. And many times it's not just the healing scriptures that we're quoting, but we're looking for the wisdom of God. James 1 verse 5 says, But if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all men, generously and without reproach, and it will <clears throat> be given to him. So we can have the wisdom of God. You know, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 30 says, But by his doing you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. So we have the wisdom of God because, number one, we can ask for it, and number two, we have Jesus in us who's been made to us wisdom wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. So we have the wisdom of God. So when we're praying, we're looking inside, right? We as believers, we who are born again, right? We have the spirit of God inside of us and the spirit of God will lead us into all truth. So he is the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of God will give us wisdom. So it's not just healing scriptures that we quote and, and memorize and say, you know, just, just verbatim and just, just spouting off healing phrases and words that we heard somebody else say, but we're looking on the inside. Lord, what, what do I need to see? Do I need to hear something? Do I need to hear something? So we just pray this right now. Father, in Jesus' name, open our eyes to what we need to see today. Open our ears to what we need to hear today. Ears that hear. Ears that hear. Help us, Lord. We, we ask you for wisdom, and we believe we receive wisdom right now. We believe we receive answers, solutions to all the questions that we have. We believe we receive answers and wisdom from God. 
in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Amen. So we're looking for wisdom because sometimes the Lord might say it's not just a healing verse. Thank God for healing verses, but he can give you like you just need to add a little bit more um, salt in your diet or some vitamins or something. I remember hearing one person, he, he said, um, and the Lord spoke to him and said, your, your body is is deficient in electrolytes. And, and, you know, and it could just, the Holy Spirit can just tell you, hey, you need to just, you know, back off on the coffee or back off on the desserts, you know. See, we're looking for um, walking with the Lord and having the wisdom of God on a daily basis. So thank God for faith and healing, teaching and all these type of things. But we need to have a relationship with Jesus for ourselves, right? So we can say, like the woman at the well in John chapter 4, for we have heard for ourselves and know that this one is indeed the Savior of the world. We need to hear for ourselves. Like Matthew 16, when Jesus said to his disciples, he said, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And the answer is that some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But he said, but who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? And that's key. Who do you say that Jesus is to you? Is he, is he just your Savior? Is he just uh, um, someone that's just going to be up there, you know, in heaven, but he, you know, or even he lives inside you, but he's, he's really not a big help to you? No, who is he to you? Is he, is he your healer? I'm reminded of Psalm 46, verse 1, I believe it is. It says, my God, I will say, my God and my refuge, huh? my strong tower. He is my, my God, my refuge. Psalm 91 talks about this too. It says, I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, I will say. So we have to declare for ourselves, who, who is Jesus to us? Yes, he's my savior, he's my Lord, and he's my healer. He's my health. He keeps me strong and healthy. Praise God for the word of God. Third John 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. How is your soul prospering? Right? So if you want physical healing and those type uh, and, and, and prosperity in your life, it's dependent on your soul prospering and you renewing your mind to the word of God and, and thinking like he thinks. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. We want to think right. We have the mind of Christ, but we have to renew our mind as well so we can think right and we can believe right, right? So if our thinking is wrong, then our believing will be wrong. So if our thinking is right, we're thinking in line with the word of God, then our believing will be right and what the heart man believes. So Jesus is my healer. Psalm 91, verse 1 again. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord. So you're going to say, I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God, my God in whom I trust. So who is he to you? Is he your healer? Then we want to confess and declare that he is our healer. You know, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1 says, um, that Jesus is the apostle and high priest of our confession. The word confession means um, he's high priest over, over what we say. Confession is what you're saying, what you're declaring. So Philemon 1 verse 6 says that the communication of our faith, that our faith may become effectual or effective by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in us by Christ Jesus. So all the good things that Christ Jesus has put into us, we want to declare those things and say those things, right? Because death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. So we choose life today. You know, the word says in Deuteronomy 30, verse 19 and 20, Behold, I set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. Therefore, choose life. <laughs> choose life. He tells us which one to choose. Choose life in order that you may live. Right? By holding fast the word of God, by holding fast the word of life, by obeying his commandments and walking in his ways. Right? So we get to choose life. So how important is the word of God to us? It's very important. We esteem it highly. And Jesus gives us victory all the time. So we talked about the spirit of wisdom. He lives on the inside of you, the spirit of God, and he knows all things. 
1 John 2, verse 20 says, But you have an anointing from the Holy One. That's the Holy Spirit. That's God, right? You have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. Which means anything you need to know, the Holy Spirit is able to give that to you. If you need to, if he, you need to exercise more, then he can share that with you. He can say, hey, let's exercise some more, you know, to stay healthy. Hey, let's take some vitamins. Hey, let's eat right. Whatever it is. Hey, let's walk in, in forgiveness. Not unforgiveness, but forgiveness. Hey, let's walk in the light as he himself is in the light. Holy Spirit will share us with these things, right? Hey, the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. Let's forgive. Let's bless people. Let's pray for those who persecute us. So it's keeping a clear conscience. Right? Following the spirit of wisdom. Well, I didn't intend to say all that, but the spirit of God will lead us into all truth. Right? We want to know. He might say, hey, um, let's pray for those who, who, who persecuted you. Let's bless those and do good to those, right? Who despitefully use us. Let's just keep on having an open and clear conscience. 1 Timothy 1 verse 5. The goal of our instruction is love from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. So if we want our faith to work, we want to have a sincere faith, not just making some phrases, right? Not just saying some Christian cliches. The goal of our instruction is love from a pure heart, right? Love from a pure heart. So we want to have sincere faith. We want to have love from a pure heart because faith works by love, right? If you want your faith to work, you got to walk in love. And the Holy Spirit say, hey, let's walk in the light. The Holy Spirit will say, hey, let's be a doer of the word that you just heard. Right? So I'm teaching now, like, hey, we're going to declare some things. Well, let's act on the word of God. Let's be a doer of the word of God. James 1.22 says, but prove yourselves doers of the word, not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word, not a doer, he's like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror. For once he has looked at himself and gone away, he has immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. But the one who looks intently at the perfect, perfect word, the perfect law of liberty, and abides by it, not having become a forgetful hearer, but an effectual doer, this man shall be blessed in what he does, by what he does. So when we look at the word, the word is referred to as a mirror. We look into the word and we start beholding him we start looking at jesus we start looking at the word and we can change and we see who we are in christ we see that hey by his stripes i was healed <laughs> i look in the word and see that hey i'm the head not the tail i've been made righteous all my sins have been washed away there's nothing holding me back now i've been forgiven i've been washed by the blood of jesus i'm i'm clean just as it just like adam when he in the beginning before sin came in just like perfect conscience. Again, 1 Timothy 1 verse 5, but the goal of our instruction is love from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. Praise the Lord. Stretch break. All right, stretch my neck. <coughs> Praise God, the word is good. Let the Holy Spirit talk to you today. What do you need to do? What are your steps? Many of you already have a um, hundred scriptures. <laughs> You might have 10 scriptures, 20 scriptures, 50 scriptures on healing. But what's the Holy Spirit telling you to do? I mean, don't get in and do a bunch of works where you have to like, you know, do a bunch of things. You have to say this so many times. And thank God for saying that, for the, the, the process of, you know, schooling yourself into faith. But always be looking on the inside. What's the wisdom of God saying here? What do I need to do? What do you need to do today? There might be just one little click or switch or one minor adjustment that'll put you where you need to be. And like, phew, life can be easy or easier for you in that sense. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my load is light. He said, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I'm gentle and humble in heart and you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy. And my load is light. Jesus wants this healing journey for you to be easy and light in that sense. Hallelujah. Easy and light. He wants you to enter into rest. Matthew 11, verse 28 to 30, I just quoted. Verse 29 says, And you shall find rest for your souls. Amen. 
rest for your souls. Hebrews talks about Hebrews chapter 4 verse 3 says, We who have believed have entered into the rest. Once you believe, there is a rest. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking to hear from God, right? To hear for ourselves about our situation, not just trying to chase some preacher down or chase, you know, this, this evangelist and this, this healing evangelist, but we need to hear for ourselves. Thank God for all the, the members in the body of Christ. Thank God for teachers and preachers, those things. But thank God for the Word of God and for the Spirit of God that lives inside of us that can give us the wisdom and understanding that we need, like right now. Hallelujah, boy, that's gold. <laughs> I mean gold, like that's, that's a, a high value. When you esteem the Word of God, man, God's not hiding things. <clears throat> He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him hebrews 11 verse 6 without faith it is impossible to please him for he who comes to god must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him his word is a treasure so yes there is some search and some digging for it but you know if you go to the ocean you do, you know a lot of the surface stuff on top of the, the ocean is just like you know um <laughs> some trash on top some just like you know, bottles or, or paper cups just kind of floating on the surface of the water, you know. Those are easy to just get stuff right, right there. But the good stuff, the gold, the treasures, the pearls, are when you, is when you dive, is when you go down deep and you start searching, searching the Word of God like it's a treasure. You know, the, the parable of the guy who, he, he, he got the field, he found the treasure in it, then he went and sold everything he had and bought that certain field because it had a treasure in it. My brothers and sisters, we have a treasure in the Word of God, and it's worthy of all that you have <laughs> to give your time and, and your treasure, and your, your just esteem it highly like, man, I'm going to find the treasure. I'm going to dig down deep. I'm not going to stay on the surface. I'm going to find out what I need to hear from God. I think you got it, right? So thank God for the healing verses. Thank God for just reading the Word, declaring the Word. But we're always looking to hear from God as we're doing that as well. We're looking to the spirit of wisdom on the inside. Because you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. 1 John 2, 27 says, you have, if you have that anointing, that teacher, he abides in you. You have no need for anyone to teach you, but as his anointing teaches you about all things. And is true and is not a lie. And just as it has taught you, you abide in him. It's talking about the anointing, the anointing in you, right? We, we do need teachers and pastors and these things, but it's the anointing, as they're speaking, it's the anointing that's teaching you. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of wisdom. Hallelujah. You know, Isaiah 11, verse 1 says, In the spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. It's talking about resting on Jesus, but then it's also referring to it's going to rest on us too, the sevenfold Spirit of God. You know, in John 14, verse 16, it says, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper. The word another means one of the same kind. One of the same kind. <clears throat> John 14, verse 16. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper. Helper uh, has a sevenfold meaning. It means helper, advocate, comforter, counselor, intercessor, strengthener, and standby, right? Helper, advocate, comforter, counselor, intercessor, strengthener, standby. The Holy Spirit is standing by to help you, huh? right? He's there to help. He's there to uh, intercede and to comfort you, right? To give you wisdom and understanding. Amen. Spirit of God is the spirit of victory, and he'll always lead you into victory. Right? So if we're desiring help and healing in our body, look to the Spirit of God inside and He will lead you into victory every time. Would the Spirit of God lead us into sickness? No, He's going to lead us into health, blessing, prosperity. Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Yeah, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Healing is for you. And the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. The Holy Spirit is also God. 
and he will lead you into victory. So if we follow the Spirit of God, he will lead us out into green pastures, right? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters, right? He restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Even with all this stuff around, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <laughs> the Lord is your shepherd. He's going to lead you into good pastures. He makes you lie down in green pastures. Lie down means you're, you're satisfied, you're full. He leads you beside quiet waters. Psalm 1 says, you know, <laughs> how blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night, and he will be like a tree, firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither, and whatever he does, he prospers. He'll lead you beside quiet waters. Glory to God. You'd be like a tree planted by streams of living water. Plant yourself by the word of God. Let the word of God wash you. You know, he, Ephesians 5 says, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word. Let the word of God wash you. It's like water. It will wash you, make you clean. It's a refreshing. Glory to God. And the spirit of God will lead you into victory every time. Every time. The Spirit of God will lead you into the truth, and the truth is the Word of God. John 17, verse 17, Jesus says, Sanctify them in the truth. Your Word is truth. In John 8, verse 31, 32, Jesus said, If you continue in my Word, then you are my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. The truth, the truth of the Word of God. And the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth, and they will lead you out into victory. Proverbs 4, verse 18 says, The path of the righteous is like the light of dawn. It shines brighter and brighter until the full day. Your path is bright. Believe it. Say that with me. My path is bright. And my steps are getting brighter and brighter and brighter. Because I am walking in the light as he himself is in the light. I'm walking in the word. I'm walking in the spirit. I'm walking by faith and not by sight. I'm not moved by what I see or feel or hear. I'm not moved by what I see or what I feel, or what I hear. I'm moved only by the word of God. We walk by faith and not by sight. You could say it this way, we walk by the word and not by our physical senses, not by the things that are dictating out here. We walk by the word and not by our physical senses. So I think you got it, right? We got the word and we got the Holy Spirit and he'll lead us out, the word will lead us out, the Holy Spirit will lead us out. You are a victor, you're an overcomer. First John five, verse four. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Is that you? Yeah. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Praise God. Glory to God. Glory be to God. Faith is the victory. The righteous man shall live by faith. So thank God for the word. We esteem the word highly. Put it number one in your life. I mean, if I could tell you anything, just saturate yourself with the word, right? And then obey the Lord. Whatever he says to you, do it. What's the key to your health and healing? What's the key to miracles? You could say it this way. John chapter 2, verse 5. It's what Jesus' mom told him at the first uh, miracle that Jesus performed. At the at Cana of Galilee, when he turned the water into wine. Jesus' mom said, whatever he says to you, do it. Well, that's true today as well. Whatever Jesus says to you, do it. And I believe that's key to your health, key to your blessing, key to you having a great life. Hallelujah, walking with Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's do a praise break. <laughs> praise break. Thank you, Jesus. His word is life. His word is life. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. 
My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your sight. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health and medicine to all their flesh. Then it says, verse 23, watch over your heart or guard your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. For from it flow the issues. The word issues means the boundaries and borders of your life. Watch your heart, guard your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. Hallelujah. It says the good man, Matthew 12, verse 33, the good man out of his good treasure brings forth what is good. The evil man out of his evil treasure brings forth what is evil, right? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So your tree, you have a good tree inside, right? The good man out of his good treasure brings forth what is good. You have a good treasure on the inside of you. So bring forth what is good, how the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Whatever you put in your ears and your eyes is going to get in your heart. So put good things in your ears and your eyes, the word of God. Then it's going to get lodged into your heart. Then out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. And death and life are in the power of the tongue. Those who love it will eat its fruit. Good fruit, good things are going to come out of your mouth. Why? Because in your heart, your heart's good. And in an honest and good heart, you're going to speak those good things. Hallelujah. So the word is a treasure to us. So make room for the word in your life. Make room to hear and hear because that's how faith comes, by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Make room to hear and hear, then mix faith with the word that you hear. Unite faith with the word. Mix faith with the word or unite faith with the word. Hebrews 4 verse 2 says, the word they heard didn't profit them, because it was not united by faith, not mixed with faith by those who heard. So we mix faith with the word. We hear the word like, I choose to believe it. So I, I mix faith. I, I believe it. I believe it. And, we, and then we can receive the health of God. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. <clears throat> I remember the testimony of this, this one individual. He was full of sickness. He was, um, his body was just, you know, losing weight and stuff. He couldn't, couldn't keep food down and this stuff. And then uh, um, he was about to die, giving up to die, some terminal illness. And uh, he put himself in an atmosphere of faith and healing. He went to this place where he could hear the word on a regular basis, hearing the word, hearing the word, and then acting on the word. So he heard the word and heard the word, and he just got better and better and better. Like Joel 3 verse 10 says, I let the weak say, I am strong. So if you're weak, what are you supposed to say? I'm, I'm, I'm so weak. I'm depressed. I'm discouraged. I'm just weak. No, let the weak say, again, the importance of what you say. For what the heart man believes, resulting in righteousness, and what the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation or resulting in victory. Right? So you say, let the weak say, I'm strong. So this individual is saying, you know, things like, I am strong. I'm strong in the Lord. And he was hearing the word, hearing the word and mixing faith with the word. And then he just got better to where then um, he just got better and, um, and, and then went across, across the way to, the, to another restaurant and had, had two different, had two meals. <laughs> I mean, he hadn't eaten for a long time. He had two meals and then he was healed. I mean, because he got so full of the word and then he was able to keep food down. He got his weight back and everything. But he got healed by hearing the word, hearing the word, and then he acted on the word. And then he was able to digest food again. And uh, so someone asked him, like, you know, like, so what happened? And this guy was testifying of how he was healed. And he said, well, I just, I guess I just got so full of the word, there's no more room for anything else. I love that. I love it. He said, I just got so full of the word, th there just wasn't any room for any sickness. No more room for that. No vacancy. <laughs> Put your sign up. No vacancy. No room for sickness. Why? Because you're full of the word. Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. Get full of the word. Consume the word and the word will consume you. Consume you with health and life. The very life and nature of God is inside of you. You have his life, his nature. You have his ability. You've been made partakers of his divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. 
you have the very life of God. First John chapter 5, verse 12 says, He who has the Son has the life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have the life. You have the Son of God. You have His life, His nature, and His ability in you. Yeah, 2 Peter 1, verse 2 through 4, right? It talks about seeing that His divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and excellence. For by these he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises in order that by them you might become partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. And you could just rehearse that and say it over and over and over. Say, I, I, I have his ability. I have his nature. I have the life of God in me. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in me. And gives life to my board, my mortal body now. This physical body, the Spirit of God gives life to it now. I, <laughs> I'm declaring healing to you right now. I speak health, healing and health over you in Jesus' mighty name. Be healed and whole. I rebuke all sickness and pain from your body. I command healing and wholeness in your body now in Jesus' name. His word is good. Saturate yourself with the word. Be like a sponge and just absorb, absorb, and then squeeze it and let the Word of God come out. And he said, well, I just got so full of the Word, I, there's no more room for any sickness. No more room. No more room for sickness in your life. Praise the Lord. Um, you know, it's like the law of displacement. You put the Word of God in, the sickness just got displaced. It had to go. It just had to go from your life. It's like, you know, you have a, a, a glass or a bowl of chocolate milk and you put it in the sink and then you turn the water on full force. You let the water just keep on hitting that bowl, hitting that bowl and all the chocolate milk is going to splash out and eventually that bowl will be full of water. It's the law of displacement. Are you ready for sickness and pain to be displaced from your life? <laughs> let the water just gush of God's Word. Let the water of God's Word just, just hit your spirit and your mind and wash you. Let all that sickness and pain go. Let the water of God's truth hit you and say, man, I'm, by His stripes I was healed. I have the life of God. I have His nature and His ability in me. Let the water of God's Word just go over and over. And that's where you can get into now the healing scriptures because you're full of joy and you've got the victory. The joy of the Lord is your strength, right? And now you can look at the word, but look at it with joy and expect. Because faith is confidence and faith is a knowing. Faith is the foundation of things expected. Hope for means expected. So faith is a confident expectation of good things to come. Faith is the confidence. It's a, it's a knowing. It's a being fully persuaded. Faith. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Are you having fun? Good, good. The joy of the Lord is our strength. In his presence is fullness of joy. Psalm 16, verse 11. At his right hand are pleasures forevermore. And then John 15, verse 11 says, These words I have spoken to you, these words, the word of God, these words, Jesus says, I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. What produces joy or fullness of joy? His word. These words I've spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. The word will produce fullness of joy in your body and in your life and your soul. And in his presence is fullness of joy. So getting in the word and getting in his presence produces joy. Well, what good is joy? Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. In Proverbs 17, 22 says, A joyful heart causes good healing. <laughs> a joyful heart causes good healing. Yeah, laughter to good, does good like a medicine. I like to tell dad jokes. Just simple, clean jokes. You know what I'm saying? What did the ship do when it got sick? It went to the dock. <clears throat> That's right. Hey, did you hear about the guy who went to the dinner table with a helmet on? He was on a crash diet. Yeah. Why did the gym close? It didn't work out. <laughs> Why did the chicken go to the gym? To work on his pecs. 
Yes, laughter does good like a medicine. A joyful heart causes good healing. But then it notice it says, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. A broken spirit. Well, we don't want a broken spirit. That dries up the bones. Proverbs 15 verse 30 says, good news puts fat on the bones. We want good news, right? And there's a bunch of scriptures like that in Proverbs we could go into, but I wasn't quite the message right here. Where is it? The joy of the Lord is your strength. He wants you full of joy, and that comes from being in his presence, and full of the word. Full of the word. Well, let's see what we have a few more minutes here. What I can share. <clears throat> you know, there's no room, you know, the Christmas story, there's no room for Jesus at the end. But let there always be room in your life for the word of God. Make room for Jesus. Make room for the word of God in your life. And that word will produce benefits for you. Love the word. Love the word. I like uh, Psalm 119 verse 165. Those who love your law have great peace. And nothing causes them to stumble. Hallelujah. Psalm 119 verse 97. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. Love for the Word of God. So what are you looking at? What are you looking at? What are you filling your life with? Um, turn with me to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew 12. Well, that's a, a good exhortation. Thank God for the scriptures. Be in the Word. Be in His presence. And the Word is life to you. Matthew chapter 12 and uh, verse 43. Share a couple nuggets with you. Matthew 12, verse 43. Now when the unclean spirit goes out of a man, it passes through waterless places. So yeah, sometimes there's uh, evil spirits that are, are, that are cast out or dealt with. But you know, the word of God will take care, I believe it will take care of everything. <clears throat> and the anointing will take care of everything. Psalm 107 verse 20 says, He sent his word and healed them and delivered them. So the word of God is healing and deliverance. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. You know, uh, in Acts chapter 19, I'm, re I'm reminded in verse 11 and 12, it says, with the apostle Paul, it says, And God was performing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul. So the handkerchiefs or aprons were even carried from his body to the sick. And the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out. Isn't that interesting? Handkerchiefs or aprons, so uh, pieces of cloth or clothing from Paul. It actually means from his skin. It says, um, God's performing certain miracles by the hands of Paul, so handkerchiefs or aprons were even carried from his skin. The literal, I believe it, it says skin right there. So cloth or skin, because his skin was touching the cloth. Then they sent this cloth to, and it was laid on sick people. And because the anointing got in the cloth, it ministered healing and deliverance to these other people. And says the evil spirits went out when the cloth touched them. Evil spirits went out, and the diseases left them. Because the, so the anointing causes evil spirits to go and diseases to go. And you have the anointing on the inside of you as well. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. You know what? You've been anointed with that same Spirit. The same Spirit of God that was on Jesus is now on you. And the, the Holy One, the Holy Anointing now lives inside of you. So if you get full of the Word, right? full of truth, the anointing can just shh, cause sickness to go, cause wrong spirits to go. And let's finish up with this. Now when the unclean spirit goes out of a man, it passes through waterless places seeking rest and does not find it. Seeking rest. <laughs> Let there be no rest for any evil spirits in our homes. We say no, no vacancy for that. No vacancy for evil spirits and no vacancy for sickness in our bodies, right? Verse 44, then it says, 
I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds it unoccupied, swept, and put in order. He goes back to the home that, where he is cast out. He finds it unoccupied, swept, and put in order. Unoccupied, swept, and put in order. Then it goes and takes along with it seven other spirits, more wicked than itself, and they go in and live there. And the last state of that man becomes worse than the first. He finds it unoccupied, swept, and put in order. What's that mean? There's no good things that was being put back into, into the heart of that person. Now we on this side, in, in the dispensation that we're living in now, in this time now, we fill up with the Word of God and with the presence of God and the Spirit of God. So there's no vacancy. So there, there's nothing that can come in, into us and say, hey, this, this house has been unoccupied, swept, and put in order. No, we are, we are filling our, our, our hearts up with the Word. We're filling our, our hearts and our minds up um, to the Word of God. And there's no vacancy for any sickness or disease or wrong spirits with us. 1 John 4, 4 says, Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. I like that. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. So we talked about the importance of the Word of God. The Word of God is life to those who find them and health and medicine to all their flesh. Stir yourselves up to be in the Word, to believe the Word, to act on the Word, and it will be life and health and healing to you. Then I tell people this, like, you, when you sit down with the Word and sharing the Word with people, it'll just cause sickness to go. You want people to see the truth of the Word of God because it's life to them. I sat down with one person, I remember a, a time back, and they couldn't be around certain chemicals and things. And just after sharing the word and sharing the word and looking at scripture after scripture after scripture, their eyes lit up and they got faith for that. And then I started spraying these chemical bottles around and stuff because I believed it was right at the time. And normally that would mess them up. They couldn't like breathe. They'd start gagging and stuff, you know. Um, and, and, but it didn't bother them. Why? Because we'd just been sharing the word and they were in faith about it. I mean, this person couldn't go to work um, but like for a couple of hours a day because they couldn't be in it with all these chemicals and, and things like that. But then after hearing the word and saturating themselves, it's like, oh, I see. I'm free from this. So declare your freedom. Say, I'm free from all sickness and disease. I'm free because the word has made me free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. If therefore the Son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Jesus loves you. His word is working mightily in you. I love you and Jesus loves you. Stay in the word. Let the word wash you and cleanse you, make you whole. God is good. There's so much to be had, but look to the spirit of wisdom. He'll let you know what you need to do, what you need to see, what you need to hear. And he'll put you in the right spot and your life will be blessed. Blessed so you can be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name.